Well, good Saturday afternoon. This is the last Storyteller Podcast, and I am Jim Hurdle, your host. Today, I wanted to share with you an excerpt from a novel that I'm working on. It's called Fatherless. It's been in works now for a couple of years, and thankfully, it is uh, coming close to being complete. I hope to have the Audible edition out in uh, probably in October of this year, and then the uh, paperback and the ebook editions available before Christmas. It's a story about a family and uh, three generations of fatherless children and what they face in this in this world. The world actually takes place back in the going all the way back to 1912 and and through the 1970s. It's a long a long timeline for this story. Uh, the chapter that I've chose for you today, I just put uh, some finished editing touches on it. Wanted to share that with you. Now, the book, like I said, is coming out this fall, but you can pre-order uh, your copy, whether it be an audiobook or ebook or even a paperback, by going to jhurdle.com, uh, putting your name on the list there, and get it pre-ordered. And that, while you're there, take a moment to tell me what you think of today's episode this excerpt from fatherless it's always good to get feedback from someone other than the man that looks at me in the mirror every morning chapter 23 peru circus farm december 1965 a mile east of the played out railroad tracks and two miles west of the tireless wabash river the picturesque circus wagons of Peru Children's Circus slumber for a season, lined up end to end like sleeping glacial beast. The turquoise shell of the lion's cage, the powder blue of the towering dromedary carriage, the fiery red of the clown's mystical car, all in stark contrast to December's gray sky. The Pollyannish sounds of circus parades muted until the groundhog's shadow fades away and cherry blossoms spread their silk across springtime's doorway. If you listen closely, you will hear two sounds cradled in the arms of this chilly morning. One familiar and robust, indeed a hopeful noise that comes with the opening of your eyes after a winter's nap. This sound stems from the kitchen tent, pans colliding with pans, spatulas spanking greasy griddles, whisk whisking what you wish. Felix, the oldest of the kitchen crew, whistling songs from childish cartoons, Lissy instructing Elijah on the etiquette of morning manners, Manners which do not include the passing of gas, accompanied by guffaws too large for the child to tame. A symphony of sounds fitting for a circus on respite. Except, of course, for the drumbeat of the child's vaporous wind. The second sound? You'll spin in circles to find the source of this other, for it hides from the eyes of the multitudes. Spinning and searching. Where is it coming from? Upon reaching the highest peak, peering down from the author's vantage, the sound is now a part of your soul. You spy the source. I must warn you. Regret will flood your soul. Grief will fill your heart at having wasted an ounce of strength in this hearkening endeavor as your mind is filled with breath sounds coming from him. Evil anticipation clinging to each inhale, hellish spirits spreading their wings on the back of each exhale. Remorsefully, you close your eyes. If you could make it stop, you would. If you could remember how to pray, you would fall to your knees. If you, could, if you could forget you ever saw him, ever heard him breathe. The thief, 
the rapist, the arsonist, Otis Alexander Bell. Hidden by a stand of sycamore trees, his lean body pressing against the hard ground, he watches, he waits, he breathes. The molted bark of the guardian sycamore looks sickly under the moon's light. Perhaps they too heard this sound. Or perhaps they know what is about to happen. With eyes the color of the night, he focuses on his target. Otis stretches his hand to the side, touching the cold metal of the red gas can. Reassured by the irresolute container, he searches his shirt pocket for the matches. Three sticks. Only three. Otis knows there is no room for error. No room, he whispers, the two words in one, sounding like the growl of a wild animal. He listens to the muffled sounds coming from the kitchen tent. The people inside are preparing a hearty breakfast for the 54 circus workers who never go home for winter's break. They never go home because, well, they are home. Circus lifers. He inhales deeply, trying to seize the aromas wafting from the tent. His stomach grumbles. Maybe he'll grab a bite to eat as the tent burns to the ground. A sneer sneaks across his face. His eyes sparkle with flames yet to be born. His wait is nearing termination. For three days, Otis Bell has carefully studied the morning routine, lying in the same spot, planning the same plan, breathing the same dirt. Elijah will come out, carrying an empty basket. He'll cross the field to the large barn, disappear behind the door. Minutes will pass before he reappears carrying the basket, now filled with fresh eggs. In the minutes prior to his son stepping out of the barn, Otis Bell will burn the tent down with everyone inside. Everyone. Everyone means that bitch, Lissy Bolander. And then Elijah will be his. Mama, I told you I'd bring him home, he whispers. A new sound. Little feet running over the frozen ground. Otis Bell picks up the red gas can. Well, that was an excerpt from Fatherless, again, coming out this fall. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you would like to order or pre-order, uh, remember you can go to jhurdle.com dot com and find all the information there and while you're there uh, leave me a comment uh, again i appreciate those things i hope you have a great weekend be safe and well i'll see you next time on the last storyteller <laughs>